Light of Dharma shining brightly, guide the journey of my life. When the Buddha spoke to me, I hear the voice of truth and peace. As I sit in meditation, I can find my heart release. And I'm broken, may the silence, all I feel is loneliness. But then I get that inspiration, and I feel the happiness. Rain of Dharma, cooling down and clearing up the morning sky. Gift of Dharma. The pathway guide the journey of my life. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now the Buddha is my teacher. My heart delighting, I can rest and I can be in unbroken, may the silence all I feel is loneliness. But then I get that inspiration and I feel the happiness. Rain of Dharma. Sharing online organized by MSBS and supported by Taiwanese Council of Malaysia. Today is the 13th of February 2022. Hope everyone is staying healthy and staying safe. We'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone to have a happy Valentine and happy Chap Gourmet. To start today's puja, I'll pass the mic over to Browning Hart. Over to you, Browning Hart. You need to unmute, Berling Hart. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Brother Terence. And welcome all devotees to our regular Sunday Puja. Today we have got sharing by Brother Ananda Fong with a very interesting title called Diga Janu Sutta. Yeah? So stay, stay tuned and follow that sharing by Brother Ananda. So to, to begin with this morning's Puja, I'm the stand-in for Sister Kut to do the reading for the offerings. So comp let's compose ourselves while I read through the significance of the offerings. Offering of lights. May we offer these candles burning brightly out of deep respect and veneration to our enlightened master, the Buddha. May these lights symbolically guide us to the light of the Dhamma, which dispels the darkness of greed with the light of generosity, the gloominess of hatred with the light of love, the darkness of ignorance with the light of wisdom through the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. Offering of joysticks and incense. 
May we offer these jaw sticks and incense out of deep respect and veneration to our blessed master, the Buddha. May our good deeds be like the fragrance of these jaw sticks, cultivating compassion, patience, tolerance, understanding and love towards all living beings. Offering of water. May we offer this water to symbolize our aspiration to cultivate the virtues of calmness, clarity and purity. Let us remind, let it remind us to diligently cleanse ourselves of our spiritual defilements and delusion through the cultivation of generosity, compassion and wisdom. Offering of flowers. These flowers too, we offer out of deep respect and gratitude to our compassionate master, the Buddha. These flowers, sweet, beautiful and choice, are clustered at the feet of our noble master. Beautiful as they are now, they will soon with the passing of time, wilt and fade and be cast away. Reflecting thus on this very nature of unsatisfactoriness, impermanence and soullessness. Let us tread the path shown by the Buddha for the eradication of sufferings here and now. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So let's, let's compose ourselves to begin with this morning's puja by saying sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let's pay homage to the Buddha. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Buddham Saranang Gajami Dhammam Saranang Gajami Sangham Saranang Gajami Dutiyam Pi Buddham Saranang Gajami Dutiyam pi dhammang saranang gachami. Dutiyam pi sanggang saranang gachami. Satiyam pi buddhang saranang gachami. Satiyam pi dhammang saranang gachami. Satiyam pi sanggang saranang gachami. Panati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Adinna dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Kame sumit. Chachara Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Ami Musawada Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Ami Rame Raya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Ami Iti piso bhagava arhang samma sambuddha vidya charana sampanno sugato loka vidu anuttaro purisa dhamma sarati tatta deva manusanam buddha so, Bhagavati. 
स्वाघा भगवता कांदेशिको अकालिको एहि पाशिको ओपनायिको पश्चाताेदिता दुपातिपन्नो भगवत सवक संगो ओजुपातिपन्नो भगवत सवक संगो न्यायपातिपन्नो भगवत सवक संगो चीपातिपन्नो भगवत सवक संगो यदि चारी पुरीस युगा अट्ट पुरीस पुगला एस भगवत सवक संगो आहुन पाहुन दक्षिण अंजलि करनीय अनुतर पुण्य क्षेत्रोका वंदा चेतियां सापं सापतानेशु पतिचित शारीरिकोदिंगूपं सकल सदा यूले निशिन्नो भारी विजया पत्तो सा वंदे तंग बोधिपादे ते महाबोधि लोकनाथे न पूजिता अहम पिते नमस्मी बोधिराजान मचुते कन सारापदी नीपे न तमदंसी नोकदीपं संबुदंगजयामी तमोनुदारयुते नूपे नहंसुगंधिन जय पूजनीयताजन मुतम आदिवासे तो नो वे पानीय परिकुकंपाय पति गु मुतम आदिवासे तो नो वे भोजन परिकुकंपाय पति गु मुतम आदिवासे तो नो वे गिलान पचय इम अनुकंपाय पति गु मुतम वन गुणोपेता कुसुम शांति भोजयामी मुनिंदस श्री पाद सरो पूजेमी बुद्धं कुसुमेन ने पुण्यन मे तेन च हो तो मोक्षं कुपं मिलायातीयताइदं मे खायो तताति विनाश भाव आकाशा च बुम्मा 
ตาปรุปรังนิกุปเกตนาทิมันเยตกัตตจิลังกัญจิปิอาโรสนาปฏิกสัญญายายมัญญาสะดุกขมิเทยมาตายาตานิยังปุตตังอายุสะเอกปุตตะมนุรักเกเอวังปิสัพบุตเตสรุมานะสังภาวเยาปริมานังเมตังเจสัพโลกัสนิงมานะสังภาวเยาปริมานังอุดดังอาดจะติรยัญเจาสังบาดังอเวรังอาสปัตตังกิตังจารังนิสินโนบาสยานโนบายาวตาสวิกัตมิตุเอตังสัตงอาิเตยปรักมเมตังวิหารังอิสัมหุอิสิงจานุปกรรมสิลวะดาสเนนสัมปันโนกามิสุบินเนยเกดังเดหิจาตุกาปเสยังปุณารีเอเตนะสัจจวัจจนะสุติเตโหตุสัพพดาเอเตนะสัจจวัจจนะสุติเตโหตุสัพพดาเอเตนะสัจจวัจจนะสุติเตโหตุสัพพดา By this declaration, may we all be well and happy always. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So we hand over the mic back to Brother Terence. Thank you, Brother Lingwan, and this is the quote for today's puja. Uh, like Brother Lingwan mentioned just now. The Ananda is back with us to share on the Tika Janu Sutta. Over to you, Bal. Oh. Thank you, Didi Terence and uh, Didi Lingkhat for the earlier chanting. Uh, let me share screen. As mentioned. Uh, this morning, we will continue with the topic of cultivating skillful actions, the Ga Janu Sutta. Starting off with the short puja. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa. As we are still in the season, may all of you in this Lunar New Year be blessed by the Triple Gem. And in the quote in this particular poster, uh, I quoted from the Sigalo Vada Sutta that Uh, the friend who is a helpmate, the friend in happiness and woe, the friend who gives good counsel, the friend who sympathizes too. These four are as friends the wise behold and cherish them as does a mother her own child. So give to your good friends. And what is Buddhism about? I often share this particular poster and this quote from the Vinaya Pitaka, the book called Mahavaga, where the Buddha gave this exhortation to the group of the first 60 enlightened disciples uh, to go out and share the Dhamma. And the Buddha mentioned, 
go months on tour for the benefit of the common folk, the happiness of the common folk, out of compassion for the world, the welfare, the benefit, the happiness of gods and human beings. So clearly, the monks go out, out of compassion for the world. But the Dhamma, the, what the Buddha taught for 45 years, is clearly for our benefit, for our happiness, for our welfare. So, but we have to heed the teachings and practice them so that we can gain this benefit, this happiness, this welfare for ourselves and those around us. In another sutta, the Ita Sutta, the Buddha mentioned, for a noble disciple, house lord, who wishes to have long life, beauty, happiness, fame, rebirth in heaven, and of course, for some of us, many more wishes, clearly in this uh, New Year season, these are the many wishes we have. The Buddha says, it is not proper that he should pray for long life, beauty, happiness, fame, and rebirth in heaven. He should rather follow a way of life that is conducive to long life, beauty, happiness, fame, and rebirth in heaven. By following such a path, he would obtain long life, beauty, happiness, fame, and rebirth in heaven. So clearly, what the Buddha taught is a way of action, a way of life, something to do, a verb, not just merely to pray or just wish. So in a very much earlier sharing, uh, we had the title of a, a talk called Are We Undermining Our Lives With Our Unskillful Actions? And in that particular sharing, uh, the Parabhava Sutta from the Sutta Nipata found in the Kudaka Nikaya of the Sutta Pitaka was, was the main anchor sutta. And from there, of course, uh, elaborations from other suttas were also shared. So for that particular sharing, uh, go back about two months back, uh, where we had this sharing on the Parabhava Sutta. Why would we uh, want to know about this sutta on downfall? Well, uh, while most of us are seeking blessings, knowing what can undermine ourselves is also important. So taking lessons from this particular sutta, uh, we seek to avoid fulfilling the, those things, those pointers mentioned in this particular sutta so that we can take care of ourselves. And of course, in today's sharing, cultivating our lives, supporting our lives, sutta selections too. So uh, as mentioned, today we are talking about the Diga Janu Sutta or the Vyaga Paja Sutta from the Angotur Nikaya Book of Eight, Sutta number 54. Uh, just recapping, uh, last month we already touched on uh, this particular Sutta, but just recapping, at one time the Buddha was staying in the land of the Koliyans. Koliyans uh, are part of a country called Kolia, north of the Sakyan Kingdom, further up in the Himalayan mountains. So here, where they had a town named Kakarapata, then Gajanu, the Kolian, went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side and said to the Buddha, Sir, we are lay people who enjoy sensual pleasures and living at home with our children. We use sandalwood important from Kasi. We wear garlands, perfumes and makeup and we accept gold and money. May the Buddha please teach us the Dhamma in a way that leads to our welfare and happiness in this life and in future lives. So clearly this Sutta is designed or the question posed by Diga Janu is clearly for lay people. And the Buddha mentioned, Vyaga Paja, these four things lead to the welfare and happiness of a gentleman in this life. What for? Accomplishment in initiative, accomplishment in protection, accomplishment in good friendship, accomplishment in balanced finances. And this was shared last month. And the Buddha continued, Yaga Paja, these four things lead to the welfare and happiness of a well of a gentleman in future lives. What for? Accomplishment in faith or confidence, ethics, generosity, and wisdom. And this is the topic of today's sharing. So what is the accomplishment in faith or confidence? The Bali word is sadda, 
Sada is frequently translated as faith, though I would prefer the, the translation confidence. Whereas faith can, may be divided into blind faith, unverified faith, and so on. So faith is very wide. Whereas confidence, well, to have confidence in another person or uh, in a certain way of doing things, uh, confidence has to be earned. It has to be demonstrated. It has to be proved that it works. Then only our confidence grows. And then we can take those lessons and do it for ourselves. So in the Sutta, the Buddha mentions, it's when a gentleman has faith or confidence in the realized one's awakening that the Blessed One is perfected, a fully awakened Buddha, accomplished in knowledge and conduct, holy, knower of the world, supreme guide for those who wish to train, teacher of gods and humans, awakened, blessed. This is called accomplishment in faith. And that was what we recited earlier in the puja, in Pali, of course. And here, taking from yet another sutta, this particular uh, reflection on uh, faith in the Buddha's awakening uh, or conviction, faith, confidence, or conviction is found in many, many sutta. In this case, we're just taking from Vidatta Dana or the Dana Sutta, the Sutta on Treasures, or the Panja Dana, the Five Treasures Sutta. In Nepali, Katamancha Bikave Satta Dana, Ita Bikave Arya Sabako Saddo Hoti, Sada Tati Tathagatasa Bodhi. Itipiso Bhagava Araham Samma Sambuddho Vijja Charana Sampano Sugato Loka Vidu Anutturo Purisadamma Sarati Satta Deva Manusana Buddho Bhagavati Idang Bujati Buk Bikave Satta Tanam. And the translation What is the treasure of conviction? There's a case where a disciple of the noble ones has conviction or confidence of faith is convinced of the Tathagatas. Tathagata means the Buddha referred to himself as the teacher. Tathagata's awakening. Indeed, the Blessed One is worthy and rightly self-awakened. Consummate in knowledge and conduct. Well gone, an expert with regard to the world and excel as the trainer of those people fit to be tamed. The teacher of divine and human beings. Awakened, blessed. This is called the treasure of sadda, of conviction, of confidence, of faith. Now, in the next few slides, we'll go through the nine qualities of the Buddha that we should get acquainted with to get to know, to understand, so that uh, we, our confidence in the Buddha can grow. So, Arahang is the first one. Arahang means that the Buddha had eradicated and become free of all defilements. There are basically 10 defilements. In another book uh, by uh, Bhikkhu Kantipalu, the book titled, Buddha, My Refuge, Contemplation of the Buddha based in, on the Pali Suttas. So in that particular book, which I would recommend you to look up, published by Buddhist Publication Society from Sri Lanka, there are many, many suttas quoted by the author, Bhikkhu Kantipalu, uh, they elaborate on this aspect. So taking uh, an excerpt from the book, Arahang means the accomplished destroyer of defilements. This virtue shows stainless purity, true worth, and accomplishment of the end, Nibbana. The Buddha is first named as an Arahat, as were his enlightened followers, since he is free from all defilements, without greed, hatred, and delusion rid of ignorance and craving, having no assets that will lead to future birth, knowing and seeing the real here and now. So all the Buddha's enlightened disciples are also arahats. They also have the quality of araham. And what next is the next quality is Sama Sambuddha, fully self-awakened. As mentioned in previous talks, the, the word, compounded word, or conjugated word, Sama Sambuddho, let's see if it is one long word, but actually made up of several words. S-A-M-M-A, -M -M -A, Sama, means fully, perfectly, completely. Sam, before the word Buddha, S-A-M, meaning self, that means by himself. And Buddha, meaning awakened. 
So this means to discover, to understand, and to fully comprehend the four noble truths of suffering, the origin of suffering, the cessation of suffering, and the noble eightfold path without any aid from a teacher. So clearly, this is a very important the word sum, do, sum meaning self. Nobody he did not get the message or the, the answers from a messenger whispering to his ear. Nobody taught him. He did not take it from uh, the cultural or philosophical ideas at that time and massage it to make it his own. It is self-awakened. So from Bhikkhu Kantipalo, he mentions, this emphasizes the majesty of one who has awakened by wisdom to the truth found in his own heart and by his own labors. He owes his enlightenment to known. It is not the work of a God granting to him, nor is he an enlightened messenger from one high, not again an incarnation of some God. Born as a human being, he declares that what he has done, others too may do. That means we too can replicate what he has done. Continuing, they are not found frequently, these fully awakened ones, and only when the heart of Dhamma is no longer known, will one of them appear and awaken to enlightenment after lives of preparation as a bodhisattva. Bodhisattva meaning, although un 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 unenlightened or not enlightened, bodhisattva means a being seeking enlightenment. And from another sutta, what is to be directly known has been directly known. What is to be cultivated has been cultivated. What is to be abandoned has been abandoned by me. Therefore, Brahmi, am I awakened, declared the Buddha to an inquiry as to who he was. So the third quality, accomplished in wisdom and conduct. So, vijayacharano, sampanno, is knowledge and conduct, or theory and practice. The Buddha is endowed with both. He says as he acts, and he does what he says. When you see things like this, you realize how great is the quality of vijayacharano, sampanno, the Buddha possesses. And Ikku Katipalu has this to say, both wisdom and compassion have a part in this virtue. Where balanced and developed to their highest degree, that showed nature of the Buddha. Wisdom sees not self, voidness, emptiness. Compassion sees suffering beings blinded by ignorance and craving. Sato, well fed or well gone. The Buddha walks the best path to reach his goal, the path leading to freedom from suffering, Dukkha. He chose to deal with things in the right way that freed him from suffering. The Buddha, meaning a Sugata, walked the path of freedom and freed himself from mental suffering. His going was good, both in his life and at its end, when he reached final Nibbana. His going forth in the world was out of compassion for the people in the need for help. The final going, compassionate showing the way to others. And Lokubidu? Lokubidu is the person who knows about the world. What do you mean by local? Well, frequently we think of local worlds, meaning um, the universe, space, galaxies, and so on. But more importantly, we know the world. We experience the world through our senses. And... Clearly, there are these six worlds, the seeing world, the hearing world, the smelling world, the tasting world, the touching world, and the thinking world. This is all we know, okay, through our senses. There are no other worlds than these six. The Buddha understands how they arise and cease. He knows how clashes and harmony arise in this world. He knows why people can be trapped in them or be free from them. This is a wisdom characteristic, the knowing through meditation and insight of the nature of all worlds. Anutturo Purisa Dhamma Sarati means that the Buddha is the best teacher who can bring the wayward back 
into the fold. The Buddha can make people understand with either just one sentence or a whole series of talks, like the time he gave his first sermon to the five ascetics. And in this particular picture, it's interesting. The Buddha is so skillful. The best teacher for, in this case, Kisa Kotami, the lady who, whose son passed away and she was seeking to revive him. And this is a story of Kisa Kotami and the Master Si and showing, illustrating the Buddha's skill in relieving her of her psychological obsession and to point her in the right direction. Kisa Gotami, having come out of her senses, uh, later renounced the world and became a bhikkhuni. So particular quality, this virtue, again, is a balance of wisdom and compassion. Taming people is a hard business, and we know that the Buddha has some tough customers, but he was successful even with very difficult people they are because of their different capacities. This quality, the teacher and the leader of devas and men, not knowing more than the Buddha or even knowing as much as the Buddha did, we struggle to understand even a little a tiny bit of what he said in his sermons. And this is in spite of having many learned monks teaching us. It was the Sattā Deva Manusana. There were many that became the Buddha's followers, even after he passed away. There are many like us who regard the Buddha as our teacher and leader. The picture on the right shows um, that, uh, what they call the Devas, not just the Devas and Brahmas too. Now, the two individuals, uh, beings, uh, paying respect to the Buddha. The one on the right, which appear to have four faces, that's the classical representation of a Brahma. A Brahma typically is represented in artistic form as those with four faces. The other being slightly behind the Brahma is a Deva, whereas because the person has only, that being has only one face. Deva means the place that is higher than us, whereas Brahma worlds are even higher than the Deva worlds. It means beings from other existence, other planes of existence also come and uh, seek teachings from the Buddha and pay their respects to. So most religious teachers will certainly be instructors of humanity, but they are taught by whatever uh, divine source they conceive. Through his wisdom, the Buddha was the teacher of both, answering not only questions put to him by human beings, but those posed by the gods as well. And this is important as we go through the uh, recorded teachings in the Dipitaka that many, many suttas which we benefit from uh, are actually uh, came as a result of questions posed uh, by uh, non-humans, by other beings to the Buddha. And the Buddha's advice given to them especially the Parabhava Sutta is one example. The question was posed by a Deva to the Buddha, whereas the Dika Janu Sutta was posed by a human being to the Buddha. The picture below shows a uh, uh, artistic rendition of the Buddha, uh, what I call appearing in the uh, Tavatimsa heaven uh, and uh, teaching the Abhidhamma to his former mother, the late uh, Queen Mahamaya and many other um, uh, devas in that particular realm. Buddha. Buddha is the person who knows the Four Noble Truths. This is similar to Sama Sam Buddha, which emphasizes the fact that the Buddha discovered the Four Noble Truths by himself. Buddha simply emphasizes the fact that he knows it well. He was the awakened one who awakened from ignorance and delusion. This also shows the Buddha's wisdom leading to awakening or enlightenment and his compassion as awakener of others. There is an unavoidable overlapping of qualities here with Samma Sambuddha. And Bhagava is a person endowed with special powers. The merits the Buddha had accumulated are much more than those of others. And this is also why he is called Bhagava. 
the merits or are acts of sharing, ethical morality, patience, renunciation, wisdom, diligence, truthfulness, determination, loving kindness, and equanimity. He perfected these to the most difficult and advanced level. He shared not only material things in his past life, but also his limbs and life. The word seems to be related to the root, but having the meaning of analysis, hence wisdom. But the apportion, portioning of Dhamma to others was done very skillfully and hence compassionately. Customary to render Lord or exalted one does not imply belief in super, supernatural being. Okay. So frequently Bhagavad is translated as Lord or exalted one. So it does not point as a supernatural being because the Buddha was a human being and he elevated himself to beyond human levels being the awakened one, our teacher. And what aspect do we have regarding, regarding persons who have faith, conviction, or confidence in the, the qualities of the Buddha? In this particular sutta, the Sadda Sutta, the sutta on conviction or faith, from the Anguta Nidikaya Book of Five, sutta number 38, it mentions, just as a large banyan tree on level ground, where four roads meet, is a haven for the birds all around. Even so, a lay person of conviction is a haven for many people. That means of monks, nuns, male lay followers, and female lay followers. So, with the person consummate in virtue, conviction, humble, sensitive, gentle, delightful, and mild, to him come those without effluence, without defilement, who are free from passion, free from aversion or hatred, free from delusion, the field of merit for the world. They teach him, uh, teach those who, are, who have sadda, who have conviction, they teach him the Dhamma that dispels all dukkha. And when he understands, he too is freed from effluence or defilement becoming totally liberated. So for those who have conviction, who have sadda, those who without, those enlightened beings will come to you because you are a delight to come to. Uh, those free from passion, aversion and delusion, they share the Dhamma with you. And therefore, and if you understand and you practice it, you too become liberated. There's one benefit of becoming uh, a person with conviction. Moving to the second quality, what is the accomplishment in ethics? It's when a gentleman doesn't kill living beings, steal, commit sexual misconduct, lie, or consume alcoholic drinks that cause negligence. This is called accomplishment in ethics. That sounds very much like the five precepts that Buddhists are encouraged to remind themselves and to practice. So what is this? Uh, five precepts that I mentioned. Yeah, essentially, it has the purpose of safeguarding ourselves. The picture on the right shows a shield, a war shield from the Viking days. In the Punya Abhisanda Sutta from the Anguttara Nikaya Book of Faith, Sutta number 39, Punya meaning merits, Abhisanda meaning uh, what they call results of meritorious action. The five precepts safeguard ourselves. And what are these five precepts which we talk about? The five precepts are essentially the Pantasila. And they are fashioned in the form of abstention. That if we avoid killing, we avoid taking what is not given, we avoid sexual misconduct, we avoid speaking lies or untruths, we avoid taking intoxicants, we protect ourselves. Okay, by not uh, generating unwholesome coming energies, which uh, these coming energies have a, have a habit of coming back and uh, causing results in our lives, later portions of this life or in future lives. And of course, uh, actions like killing, stealing, sexual misconduct and false speech are often rooted in greed, hatred and delusion. These are the 
uh, ingredients. These are the seeds for generating unwholesome karmic energies, which make our lives very unpleasant. So to safeguard ourselves, we avoid this. Of course, in other sharings, I've also often mentioned the five precepts lend themselves to positive actions, not just abstention, but also to a cultivation to practice certain things. And therefore, we should practice the five ennoblers, the opposite of the five precepts. Five ennobles means five points that ennoble us, that uh, not just avoiding killing, we should save lives. Not just taking what is not given, we should be generous and more giving, and so on. Clearly, at the bottom picture, showing the next uh, uh, scene in which the Viking shield um, or the shield may be used to ward off to protect oneself from onslaught of weapons and defilements and so on. Now, more from the Abhisandha Buddha. A disciple of the noble ones, abandoning the taking of life, abstain from taking life. In doing so, it gives freedom from danger. Freedom from animosity, freedom from oppression to limitless numbers of beings. That means he's telling others that I am not going to hurt you. So in giving freedom from danger, freedom from animosity, freedom from oppression to limitless numbers of beings, he gains a share in limitless freedom from danger, freedom from animosity, freedom from oppression. So in declaring avoidance, abandoning, and abstaining from killing or taking life. We give others this freedom of danger, from danger, from animosity, from oppression. In so doing, we give ourselves freedom and we get the share for it. We are telling people we are compassionate to all. Furthermore, abandoning, taking what is not given, often called stealing, abstains from taking what is not given. In doing so, it gives freedom from danger, freedom from animosity, freedom from oppression to limitless numbers of beings. In giving freedom from danger, from animosity, from oppression to limitless numbers of beings, he too gains a share of limitless freedom. The more abandoning illicit sex, the disciple of the noble ones abstains from illicit sex. What does illicit sex mean? Well, kamisu micha, meaning uh, sexual misconduct. Sexual misconduct here talks about when a person is uh, in a committed relationship. That means you are married to another person, whether male to male, female to female, or female to male. Uh, whichever type of religion, as long as in that society, there's a recognition that uh, these two individuals are committed to each other. Uh, any one of them or third parties trying to break their union uh, and have sexual uh, relationships with either committed individuals, that is called illicit sex. And also individuals who are too young, that means below that society's uh, contention that it is uh, beyond the age of a majority, that means not the adult, not able to make their own decisions, usually requiring guardians. And uh, why I mentioned society? Because these rules change with time. In the Buddha's time, uh, getting married at 16 years was accepted. So that is not illicit sex when they get married at 16. But in today's world, where the age of uh, consent is, uh, in some countries is 18 years old, in some countries are 21 years old, and therefore anybody uh, trying to get married or having sex below those ages, depending on the country, that is classified as illicit sex in that country. Okay, so anyone under uh, the guardianship, that means depending on their guardians, their father and mother to take care of them, and uh, for some reason the third party comes in and tries to uh, have illicit sex, and therefore uh, that is called breaking this particular precept. So by abandoning and abstaining from easy sex, the practitioner gives freedom from danger, freedom from animosity, freedom from oppression. He gains a share in limitless freedom from danger, from animosity, and from oppression. 
Furthermore, abandoning lying, the disciple of the noble ones abstains from lying. In doing so, he gives freedom from danger, freedom from animosity, freedom from oppression to limitless numbers of beings. In giving freedom, he gains share in this limited freedom from danger, from animosity, from oppression. On the aspect of uh, lying, uh, there are other suttas where the, where the Buddha mentioned that those who make a habit of lying are indicating their ability to do more, including kill you also. So for those who make a habit of lying, or at least for the rest of us who are practicing to abandon lying, to abstain from lying, watch out for those who are liars. Okay, once caught, we should be wary of them. We cannot trust because once a person lies, our faith, our confidence, our conviction in them for telling the truth is thrown down the toilet. And therefore, these people who are habitual liars have to prove to us that they, they are sincere. For us to continue believing in those liars, it is silly of us very unskillful of us. So continuing, furthermore, abandoning the use of intoxicants, the disciple of the noble ones abstains from taking intoxicants. Now, intoxicants is not limited to the picture on the top right uh, of liquor. Intoxicants cover uh, what frequently in society we call drugs, hallucinating drugs like heroin, marijuana, and so on. Okay, that intoxicates us. It clouds our judgment. We are no more mindful. We are no. We are becoming less and less in control of ourselves. So we abandon, abstain from such intoxicants, and by doing so, it gives freedom from danger, freedom from animosity, freedom from oppression, and it gains a share in this limitless freedom from danger, and so on. And in conclusion, this is the fifth gift. The fifth great gift, original, long-standing, traditional, ancient, unadulterated, unadulterated from the beginning, that is not open to suspicion, will never be open to suspicion, and is unfolded by knowledgeable contemplatives and priests. So clearly, these five precepts have this uh, resultant, and it shows our compassion to others by us giving freedom. In, in us giving freedom through our abandoning and abstaining from these five unwholesome actions, from these five uh, practicing precepts, uh, we also share in this limitless freedom. Uh, as you go through the Buddha's teaching, you will find a common theme in whatever suttas, whether in the form of the five precepts or many other suttas. There are these two aspects of refraining and cultivation. And this is also the form mentioned in right effort in the Noble Eightfold Path. Now, quoting from the Mangala Sutta, the Sutta on blessing, blessing means something good that we can have within our lives. In the Mangala Sutta, it's mentioned, refrain from what is unwholesome or unskillful. Be steadfast in good quality. We should do good quality over and over again. And we should stop performing unwholesome or unskillful actions. And that will be to our benefit. Now, moving on in another quality in the Diga Jadu Sutta. And what is the accomplishment in generosity? Chaga. Chaga is the Pali word for generosity. Now, it's when a gentleman lives at home, rid of the stain of stinginess, freely generous, open handed loving to let go, committed to charity, loving to give and to share. This is called accomplishment in generosity. Now, there is a brief. Now, equally, we learn of, the, uh, of another Pali term, dana. Dana means giving and is related to chaga generosity. Of course, generos chaga is a, a wider term that includes dana too. So practice of dana is also, in a way, practice of chaga. But chaga covers a wider range. Now, in this particular sutta, because there are these three bases of meritorious activity. In this particular sutta called the Punya Kriya Vatu Sutta from the Ankutarinika Book of Vain. Punya meaning merits, 
Kiriya Vatu meaning action, okay, or activity. So meritorious activity. So this particular sutta touches on three aspects. The basis of meritorious activity consisting in giving or dana. The basis of meritorious activity consisting in virtuous behavior, sila, like for instance, the practice of the five precepts. The basis of meritorious activity consisting in meditative development of meditation, bhavana. So here, uh, this sutta's uh, approach is very interesting. And for those wanting to uh, in rebirth in the heavenly world, uh, this sutta is to be taken note of. And the sutta mentions, here bhikkhus, or here monks, someone has practiced the basis of meritorious activity consisting in giving to a limited extent, virtuous behavior to a limited extent, and not undertaken meditative development. With the breakup of the body after death, he is reborn among humans in an unfavorable condition. Why? Because the coming energies, the meritorious actions previously performed in terms of giving and virtuous behavior were to a limited extent. And of course, this person has not done any meditation. And he, he may have a chance to be part of human, but in an unfavorable condition. And continuing, someone else has practiced the basis of meritorious activity, consisting in giving to a middling extent, virtuous behavior to a middling extent, not undertaken meditative development. So with the breakup of the body after death, he is reborn among humans in a favorable condition. So clearly, those of us who practice giving or dana to a middling extent, who have uh, practiced sila to a middling extent, and have not practiced meditation, no bhavana at all, uh, may obtain a, an opportunity to be born as humans again after our passing, but in a favorable condition. So this is clearly telling us certain things as to what we can gain. And number three, someone else has practiced the basis of meritorious activity consisting in giving to a superior extent, virtuous behavior to a superior extent, not undertaken meditative development. So with the breakup of the body after that, he's reborn in the companionship of with the devas ruled by the four great kings. In Chinese uh, 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 culture, you have the symbol of the four great kings at the bottom in the picture. The four great kings is a plane of existence higher than the human realm. Humans are occupying, out of the 31 planes of existence, humans are number five, the fifth plane from the bottom. And this particular plane, the four great kings, Tatu Maharajika, is Number, plane num of existence number six, just above the human realm. So clearly, for one who is practicing dana to a superior extent, sila to a superior extent, but haven't uh, cultivated bhavana or meditation, the meritorious actions uh, activity generated is enough to propel the person in the company of this plane of existence number six. Uh, in the company of the devas of the four great kings. So clearly, this is a formula for those wishing to be born in that particular plane of existence, higher than the human realm. Now, dana has many, many implications. In, the, in this case, a requisite for uh, spiritual progress. There are yet many, many other aspects contained in the Tipitaka on aspects of dana. Dana with respect to uh, who to give to, when to give, what to give, uh, what is your uh, intention, what are your intentions, your mental makeup yeah, uh, during the giving and so on. And of course, in the previous page, I talked about that aspect of uh, the results of meritorious activity. In this particular uh, page or pages, we will talk about a requisite for spiritual progress. And this uh, advice comes from a range of suttas, the Macharya suttas from the Ankutari Nikaya Book of Five. Here is mentioned, mendicants, without giving up these five qualities, 
you can't enter and remain in the first sense option, jhana. This is the Bali spelling. Uh, jhana or absorption, frequently translated absorption, this is, these are deep levels of meditation, deep levels of concentration. Uh, jhana is used as a unit of uh, measuring this, uh, what they call uh, deep concentration. You can go into the first absorption, you can go to the second absorption, Absorption or suggestion. These are getting deeper and deeper. Now, you can't enter and remain in the first, second, third, and fourth absorption. And because of that, uh, uh, also, you cannot realize the fruit of stream entry. Fruit of stream entry is another way of saying stages of enlightenment on the Buddha's path. Uh, this is the fruit of stream entry, is the Bali term is called Sotapanna. And the fruit of one's Returner. This is Sakatagami or second stage of sainthood. And the fruit of non return, return, Anagami, the third stage of sainthood. And finally, gain Arashi, full enlightenment for the disciple of the Buddha. So, a person who has not been giving uh, and has not uh, given up these five qualities cannot enter the assumptions, practice jhana, which is a requirement of the Noble Eightfold Path, Sama. Uh, samadhi and because of that the person the individual is not able to realize the first stage of sainthood the second stage the third stage of sainthood and finally the fourth stage being arahat being fully enlightened so what are these five qualities that that uh, prevent you from gaining jhanas or gaining at different stages of enlightenment well stinginess a person who is not generous who doesn't want to give Stinginess with dwellings, families, material possessions, praise, and the teachings. Now, note the Buddha in this uh, top portion mentions the sutta was delivered to mendicants, that means to monks. So, even monks occasionally have stinginess. They too have to practice generosity. So, uh, stinginess with dwellings, to with families, they are overly attached to this particular family who may be supporting this, uh, this monk or these monks. Uh, material possessions may be offered by this particular family and so on, or the lady. Uh, and they are very uh, affected, very much affected by praise as to the abilities of these monks and very stingy with regards to sharing the teachings that they have learned also. So all this stinginess, uh, the Buddha says, without giving up these five qualities, uh, you can't enter and remain in the first absorption, second, third, and fourth absorption. And of course, obtain the fruit of stream entry, the, sec the second fruit, the third fruit, and finally, Arahashi. So clearly, uh, by not practicing generosity and not practicing dana, uh, even monks uh, hinder themselves from uh, progressing along the Noble Eightfold Path. And the Sutta continues. But after giving up these five qualities, you can enter and remain in the first absorption, second, third, and fourth absorption, and realize the fruit of stream entry, the fruit of one's return, the fruit of non-return, and finally, full enlightenment, Arahashi. What five? Stinginess with dwellings, families, material possessions, praise, and the teachings. After giving up these five qualities, you can realize arhatship. So this is yet another important aspect of dana. So do not underestimate um, the, the important practice of generosity and giving. Moving on, what is the accomplishment in wisdom? It's when a gentleman is wise, he has the wisdom of arising and passing away, which is noble, penetrative, and leads to the complete ending of suffering. This is called accomplishment in wisdom. And the sutta ends with, these are the four things that lead to the welfare and happiness of the gentleman in future life. So what is this wisdom of arising and passing away? And the key word in the word, Pali word for wisdom is panya. P-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Now, in brief, the Sutta called the Panyavava Sutta, 
Panyava refers, refers to the person who is wise, uh, taken from the Samyutta Nikaya, chapter number 46, sutra number 45. In this particular sutta, he mentioned, Sir, they speak of a person who is wise, or Panyava, no idiot, Anila Mungo. Who is a person who is wise? No idiot defined. Mendicant. They are called wise. No idiot because they have developed and cultivated the seven awakening factors. Satanang Bojangana. Uh, seven means Satta, awakening factors, Bojanga. So the Satta Bojangas are very important. So what are these uh, seven awakening factors? They consist of mindfulness, sati, investigation of principles, dhamma vichaya, energy, viriya, rapture, piti, tranquility, pasadi, immersion or concentration, samadhi, and equanimity, upeka. They are called wise, no idiot, because they have developed and cultivated these seven awakening factors. So for one to develop wisdom, we have to practice the seven awakening factors. So in brief, what is this sati or mindfulness? This factor is about cultivating flexible, focused attention to the present moment with acceptance. Now, the term acceptance is very important. Very often, we try to focus our attention, flexible attention to the present moment, but we are gradually accepting what we are experiencing, including uh, the, the smell that comes about following a garbage truck. So we have to accept this. This is what we are experiencing with loving acceptance. We should not have aversion coming out. We should not reject this present moment as experience. Continuing, mindfulness allows us to consciously step out of the domi domination of our internal representations to slow our goal-directed autopilot pursuits for a moment and to allow things to be as they are. Phenomena are things as they are. There's no uh, good or bad about it. They are just as they are. So we have to cultivate mindfulness to pay attention, to experience this present moment uh, experience through our uh, six senses as they are without pushing it away because we don't like it without uh, greedily grabbing onto them because we love it, we want more of it, and so on. We just note it as it is. Number two, investigation. Worries may draw us into preoccupation with the past or anxiety about the future. But our mindful stance allows us to investigate these mental events with a curiosity and an even-handed wisdom. So we need to investigate. Notice, uh, very often in the qualities of the Dhamma, we come across a Bali, call, Bali term called Ehi Pasiko, inviting investigation. That, so in Buddhism, we approach Buddhism with, uh, with an invitation from the Buddha to, in, to investigate. But that is the beginning stage for beginners. All the way up to, uh, uh, to becoming wise, to cultivate, and general wisdom within us. Wisdom, uh, investigation still comes to the forefront. In this case, uh, investigating uh, the experience that we have uh, in the present moment through our mindfulness to see what is going on, not but not being attached to them. We also need to have Riya, persistence or energy. Often translated as energy, this one reflects the degree to which we can remain committed to the process of awakening to reality and liberation from suffering. It involves an increasing engagement with practice. So try to arouse ourselves to have put more energy and persistence to our consistent practice of the Buddha's teachings. T, or joyfulness, or auto translated as rapture. This is the experience of delight. The state of bliss arises when attention is absorbed in, in a way that is conducive uh, 
to further activities that enable awakening. So in, as we go deeper into meditation, piti or joyfulness arises. Serenity, pasadi. Freedom of action in our thoughts, feelings, and behavior is often followed by an experience of calm and centeredness. They may be described as serenity. This, fa this factor involves the calming, focusing, and stilling of body and mind. Number six, samadhi, concentration. This one involves settling and composing the mind and focusing it with pointed attention to the present moment. It contributes to enhancement of wisdom, compassion, and overall well-being. Okay. And number seven, upeka, equanimity. Upeka or balance or non-reactivity of mind is the seventh factor of awakening. Equanimity reflects an acceptance that this is how things are, and by extension, everything as it should be. This term is also associated uh, to the act of letting go. This is about seeing things as equal and interconnected. We see ourselves in all things and we are moved by the suffering and joy of living experience itself. Our emotions extend into a place of loving kindness, sympathetic joy, and warm regards towards all beings. Uh, one uh, thing to note about upeka, or economity, it is not indifference. In fact, with Upeka, there is uh, a place for loving kindness, sympathetic joy, and warm towards uh, all beings. So in the end, all these things are actions we need to do to cultivate, to bring within our, our lives so that we can have a more pleasant journey in Sampara. So here, this particular sutta, which you have probably seen many times, the Buddha mentions that we are responsible. I am the owner of my deeds, heir to my deeds. Deeds are my womb, my relative, and my refuge. I shall be the heir of whatever deeds I do, whether good or bad. So we are responsible for our actions. So clearly, the Dika Jadon Sutta talked about this advice. These four things lead to the welfare and happiness of a gentleman in this life. That of initiative, of protection, of good friendship, of balanced finances. And this morning, we were talking about uh, welfare and happiness of a gentleman in future lives that we should cultivate confidence, ethics, generosity, and wisdom. And concluding this sutta, they are enterprising. They are enterprising in the workplace, diligent in managing things. They balance their finances and preserve their wealth. Faithful, accomplished in ethics, bountiful, rid of stinginess. They always purify the path to well-being in lives to come. And so these eight qualities of a faithful householder are declared by the one who is truly named to lead to happiness and in both spheres. Welfare and benefit in this life and happiness in future lives. This is how the householder merit grows by generosity. So that concludes the Yajanatuta. And in summary, the summary screen says that we should uh, avoid undermining ourselves via unskillful actions. We should abandon those actions. Instead, we should support our lives via cultivating skillful actions, very much like in the picture uh, on the left, showing the germination of the sunflower seed and ultimately blooming on the right in the beautiful sunflowers that we see. So we should cultivate skillful actions then develop them to a high degree. So in the end, uh, the wishes uh, from myself and also Theravada Buddhist Council that uh, in the coming days, we'll be celebrating the end of the 15-day uh, uh, Lunar New Year called Chakome, the 15th. And in the bottom, the particular sutta, whatever is to be done by a teacher with compassion for the welfare student, 
that has been done by the Buddha out of compassion for you. Here are the roots of trees. Here are empty places. Get down and meditate. Don't be lazy. Don't become one who is later remorseful. This is the Buddha's instruction to you. So, in closing, this morning sharing, Anumodana, benediction. Uh, reciting the Pali only. Akasata Chabumata Deva Naga Mahitika Punyang Tang Anumoditwa Chirang Rakkantu Sasanang Chirang Rakkantu Desanang Chirang Rakkantu Mamparan Patiana Dedication of Merit Idang Bo Nyati Nang Bo Tu Sukita Hon Tu Nyatu Yo Idang vo nyati nang vo tu sukita hon tu nyato yo. Idang vo nyati nang vo tu sukita hon tu nyato yo. Closing veneration. Arahang tamma tambuto bhagava buddhang bhagavantang abhivademi. Fakato Bhagavata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Supatipanno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Sangang Namami Saddhamo Tirang Pitato May the good of him long and dear Sabbe Satta Sukhi Hontu May all beings be happy That's the end of my sharing Back to you, Aditi Terence Thank you very much, Ananda, for today's sharing. Do join us again next week at the same time at 10 a.m. Thank you everyone for watching. For other videos, please go to the links below. Bye-bye for now. See you all soon.